Hi, everyone. We're not at the actual end of The Chosen One's journey as a story, but we have reached the end of the audio. I've got two reasons for cutting it off now. First, though there is still plenty of good story left, and pokey shipping for those of you into that, it peters out at chapter 22. As I said from the start, one of my conditions for reading a story is that it has to be completed. Dragon Wolf cleared Ash's Indigo arc. He did not finish Johto. Cliffhangers are good and all, but not if you end up hanging for all eternity. We have our stopping point, and I'm taking it. My other reason for stopping here is the length of this story. It's already longer than any other novel I've read on this channel, and honestly, it had become a burden by the end of the summer. I love doing this or else I wouldn't do it, but damn, I hate to say this. I couldn't maintain investment. My tastes are geared towards rich stories, stories which delve into depth of character with internal and external conflicts that the hero constantly struggles against with no certainty of outcome. If you liked this story, I'm glad you did, but I personally liked all of my previously read stories better. I sincerely hope that if you enjoyed hearing me read, you'll give one of them a chance as well. This isn't to say that The Chosen One's journey is bad by any stretch. In fact, as a first attempt at writing, it is fantastic. Dragon Wolf's conception of aura powers, introduced right from the beginning, made me fascinated to learn what all Ash could do with such potential. Any asshole can claim their OT is strong, but Dragon Wolf went the extra step and showed how Ash was better than all the rest. And it wasn't just powers he won in a genetic lottery, Ash was shown to value discipline of body and mind, maintain good habits, and hold knowledge in high esteem. Dragon Wolf's descriptions of his battles were no less impressive. He utilizes an extensive vocabulary to paint a vivid picture of two animals jabbing and dodging around each other. There are wall slams, there are dust clouds, there are energy beams fighting for dominance, all of which is drawn from the original show. All this makes for an easy mental picture. Even so, when all said and done, this is an average story for me. It starts out really well, but as it goes on, it becomes more of a drudge. My previous audio novels have the opposite problem. They start off slow, then get good. Making My Way begins with Ash searching fruitlessly through a doctor's house and arguing with his Pokémon. Corrupt Authority starts with a match between Fakemon that bear no relevance to the plot. Phoenix Rising starts with Merlin Durai resurrecting Ash from death and looking to all the world like a gross Gary stew. But they all develop into personal, and actual, high-stakes situations in which the protagonists must battle their own insecurities and make hard decisions. Things go wrong, and the heroes don't always come out on top, or at least without permanent scars. The Chosen One's journey, by contrast, starts strong with someone possessing little to his name but great potential. He's got the whole journey ahead of him, and a special training style that enhances the world building. Anything's possible. A new spirit of wickedness could arise in trainers that he has been chosen to counteract. A, a catastrophe could be building that would threaten the world in a matter of months, which Ash actively prepares to guard the world against. Maybe someone Ash's age also has aura powers, but has abused them to the point that Ash has to replace him as the good and true guardian. Or maybe Ash can see into the minds and motives of the people he encounters, and we learn more about humanity through a Pokemon story. Instead, we end up with the same old Fight Gym Get Badge story that has been told a thousand times, the only difference being that the trainer has special mind powers. That isn't some chosen one's journey, that's everyone's journey. Again, it was Dragon Wolf's first time, so I don't blame him for wanting to establish his own trainer journey story at least once. I just didn't like how there was battle after battle with nothing at stake but to find out who was stronger. If we all agreed that it was Ash because he was, you know, the chosen one, we could then cut those battles from the story, and here's how the remaining summary would sound. Guy who likes training animals for some reason gets some animals to train. Guy uses special empathy powers to get good quicker. Guy travels for a while and saves a girl who becomes his companion. Guy gets some more animals, then picks up a second companion. Companions basically exist to tell him, good game, so that he can say, thanks. 
Then Guy gets more animals, two of which join him because he's nice to them, and the rest he fights or gets from prize eggs. Guy competes with other humans by making them underestimate him, but also by saying, finish it, when he wants the battles to end. At one point, Guy gets on a boat and wins a lot of free stuff. Then the boat sinks and the guy saves people. At some other point, Guy gets a near-fatal injury, but then he's okay again. Then, uh, battle, 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 a smirk here, an evolution there, a Pokedex here, and another evolution there. The unusual coloration of this Pokemon suggests it is shiny, and okay, nothing's really happening. Gary shows up a couple of times and is a dick, but then gets put down for being a dick. Lesson learned, don't be a dick. Guy beats Team Rocket a couple of times, then he gets invited to Mewtwo's house. We almost have an existential lesson, but then Guy beats Mewtwo with Mew and catches it. Then it's more battle, 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 and hooray, we won! Beers all around. Did I miss anything? I know I somewhat oversimplified it, but not by much. I'm not trying to make waves here, but there's a reason that Dragon Wolf decided to do a rewrite. And again, this story far, far exceeds my own first Pokemon fic, so this rating I'm about to give, it comes from a place of high standards, and a comparison to all the books and audios I've ever explored. 5 out of 10. Good concepts and descriptiveness, but too repetitive and predictable. The best first effort I've ever seen, but nowhere near as good as Phoenix Rising. Thanks for listening, and if you enjoyed what you heard, please check out novels from other authors I've done. Cheers, everyone.